Good morning and welcome to our devotion as we start our Monday, as we begin another week. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise. And with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips. And my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Today we consider Romans chapter 12, verses 12 through 16. Rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints, and seek to show hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be wise in your own sight. And so we consider. Christians confess the faith, arguing that no one without God's will can harm a hair on the head of any person. All troubles they maintain come from God, but they are only a father's rod that strikes in love, and the suffering of this time is not worth the glory that shall be revealed in them. However, when some Christians are in distress, they show themselves despondent, hopeless, and impatient, murmuring against their fate. They forsake their brothers in a time of distress and repay their persecutors evil for evil. Sometimes they seek revenge for themselves or want to resist persecution with force. In all of this, do they not bring dishonor to the faith that they confess with their mouths? Don't they openly give weapons into the hand of the world so it can dispute their faith and declare it to be a deception? Therefore, all who confess the Christian faith before the world consider. The time of distress is precisely the right time to let our faith shine before all the world. We should reveal the power that overcomes the world. We will then justify our faith by a godly resigning of ourselves to the evil times. We do this, St. Paul says in today's text, rejoicing in hope proving the, to the world that it is in distress without hope. Meanwhile, our faith never disappoints and leads us to doubt, for we know that suffering leads to glory and death to life. The apostle characterizes us next as patient in tribulation. We must prove to the world that our faith gives us power to endure everything patiently as a burden that the eternal love has placed on us. Next, Paul advises us to remain constant in prayer. We must prove to the world that our faith does not waver when it storms, and it does not doubt that our prayers are heard even when help is delayed. As the distress continues, we continue steadfast in prayer. Paul goes on to say, Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. We must prove to the world that our faith does not bind us only on good days. Instead, the bond becomes even firmer in distress, disgrace, and persecution. In addition, we are not ashamed of those who are disgraced, but instead regard those who suffer for Christ all the more highly. Our goods belong to our poor brothers, and our homes are places of refuge for those who are persecuted. The Apostle adds, Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. We must prove to the world that our faith does more than prevent us from taking revenge on our enemies. Indeed, we must show our love to them, repaying their evil with good, their cursing with blessing, and their blasphemy with intercession to God, just as Christ interceded for those who crucified him, and Stephen interceded for those who stoned him. In our text, Paul makes one additional demand on Christians. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. 
live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Here he teaches us that Christians should also justify their faith by mutual concord and humility. Nothing makes a stronger negative impression on the world than the viewing of discord and pride ruling among those who confess the Christian faith. And it is in no way wrong. We Christians confess with the apostle, for in one spirit we were all baptized into one body in the Holy Supper, and all were made to drink of one spirit. Before God, we have earned nothing but wrath, and everything we have received was not from ourselves, but from grace. What a demand to concord and deepest humility this is. What are we doing then when we maintain quarreling, divisions, envy, a lack of forgiveness, and the like among ourselves? What are we doing when we are haughty with our gifts and our knowledge, seeking honor for ourselves and despising our despised brothers? What uh, We are then disavowing with deed what we confess with our mouths and declaring that our faith is a lie. Instead of attracting the world to our faith, we cast suspicion on it. Our life is then a public warning that others should not believe as we do. Wherever we go then, let us be, uh, let us be mindful of the calling that we have, not only to confess the Christian faith before the world, but also to justify it by mutual concord in humility. And so we pray. May we thy precepts, Lord, fulfill, and do on earth our Father's will, as angels do above. Still walk in Christ the living way with all thy children, and obey the law of Christian love. Amen. And we pray. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> and we also join together in prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining us for our devotion this morning. The Lord bless you throughout the day and throughout the new week.